Hello! In this video, Valiant gives a presentation on their air source heat pumps. Now, I filmed this presentation at the Marriott Hotel where Valiant were given an introduction to their brand new Ecotech Plus combination boiler. If you want to watch that video, you can find it in the card above now or down in the description. There's a third video to this series and that is all about finance and how you can offer your customers finance so that they can afford a new boiler when theirs is no longer working. Because we all know boilers are getting more expensive and a typical simple combo change is going to cost between two and a half and three thousand pounds. So finance could really help your customers out. I wanted to let you know that I've just finished installing a Valiant Ecotech Plus 826. Now I'm going to make several videos on this boiler. The first video is going to be all about me commissioning the boiler. So when I first turn it on, what happens on the display and how you go about setting it up because the setup is slightly different. There are a couple of extra parameters, but I'll run you through those so you know exactly what to do when you come to install one of these boilers yourself. The second video is going to be all about this Senso Room Pure. This is Valiant's thermostat to go with that boiler for a simple operation for the older customers who don't want to use a smartphone. The third video is going to be for the homeowner. So a simple video on how to turn it on and off, how to adjust the hot water temperature, central heating temperature, a couple of fault codes like F22, how to top it up and reset the boiler. And of course, if you want to pass that video on, you know where to find it, cards above and down below. That's enough for me. Let's get on with this heat pump presentation. I'm going to show you that. Show you a little video. Um, I'll just mention the spy. I'll try and get through as quick as we've got. Um, you know, Jace over there is going to talk to you about how you can take the money to your customers for boilers and for heat pumps. Um, but if at the end of it, I will be around. If you want to come see me, if there's anything you want to ask me about heat pumps, I want to come on to one of our training courses at Farnborough or Bristol. Um, feel free to come see me. So I'll start with the presentation for Portsmouth. Vale group itself, I'm going to read through it, but you can probably read that. 30 million customers, uh, 60 countries across Europe, 340,000 installed partners, 21,000 uh, wholesale partners. We are the largest eating company in Europe. It says there, that would be preemptive. No, 25 years. Next year's experience in renewables as well. We have been doing heat pumps for a while. The heat pump that I'll be talking to about is a newish, well, very new one to us, well, it's over 20. Uh, over 140 years of manufacturing uh, experience. Valence, the family owned company, still is by the Valence family. They do all the content, not previously. And we've obviously got the factory that Simon mentioned earlier at Melba. Uh, it is a replication of the the German factory, exact replication, except one difference. The vending machine in Germany, you can have a beer, whereas the one in Belgium, you can't get a beer at different times. That's the only difference. Um, the, the outstanding manufacturing, again, this is, I'll give it where we live. 23 climate chambers, uh, sure. Super style acoustic sensor to test everything, and 100% production tests. Everything that leaves Belpar, there's a serial number attached to it and it's filmed on the production line, whether it be a boiler or a heat pump. It is filmed. If there's an issue with anything, you can tell us a serial number and we can go back to it being filmed. So if there was something missing, we know emergency out. You know, <laughs> it's, it's, it's we disappeared somewhere on the line because we can actually show you got videos of everything that's done in the production line. Anthem plus air to water heat pump. Um, this is our main air source heat pump. It's, for those who know about heat pumps, it's a monoblock heat pump. Uh, but what that means is that refrigerants contain within the unit, so it's not split, so you don't need your F gas. Whereas with split units where it's separated, you do need F gas to install. This heat pump is a monoblock, so you don't need that certification. Um, it was launched in 2020, same cities. Um, the main points from that is that it's what we call a refrigerant R290. R290 is leading the way with refrigerants with heat pumps. There are different refrigerants, the main ones being R410A, which is the older one, R32, which the majority of heat pumps are now, or R290, which we have, we've had since 2020. We'll go on to what's good about that in a minute. Um, and that's, most manufacturers are now changing, yeah, they dated to R290, but we're sort of leading the way of that. Difference in the heat pumps, uh, the refrigerants are out, but in the heat pumps, R290. It's uh, got better heat transfer, 
than all the heat, than, than all the refrigerants. And you can see there, there's this figure here, GWP, this is global warming potential. The, the amount of heat that's trapped within carbon dioxide has a, a figure that's relevant to, um, to your actual refrigerant. If you can see there, the R410A, 2018. That's very high. So they're trying to phase that refrigerant now. And if you were to regas a heat pump that's uh, got R410A, you talking to talk, potentially around about 1500 pounds of gas in. 675, which is the majority, that's 675 GWP, that's R32, that's the new heat pumps, the one that was launched by uh, Ideal, the uh, week, logic there. That's brand new, it's an R32. And then you've got R290, which is what the R plus is, which is just free, which is seen as extremely long. And the reason it's that, it's also a natural refrigerant, the reason it's that is it's pure, pure propane. It's actually propane, and it's pure as well. So that's what we're going on. There's a small amount of it within the charge, which you can see there. So, so it's on. Main things about the Aerotherm Plus, key benefits, it's quiet in operation, very quiet. Pretty soon, the desk bells, I think that's less than a cup of it's quite quiet, mm -hmm. it's going to be quiet on this, it's a pretty quiet. Um, low energy yeah. consumption, A triple plus yeah. efficiency, superb efficiency. So, and this becomes relevant if you're dealing with that, well, you see the customer, but housing associations or uh, any local authorities, uh, new, new build, they want the, low, the high efficiency for the lower SAT rating of the EPC, the energy performance certificate, that helps there. And as I mentioned, the low GW policy design, German design, but now manufactured in. Ability to cascade our, our, our heat pump range runs from three and a half, five, which all seem low to you, but seven, ten, and twelve. They are the same footprint, not on the other third of us, so the size is 495 by 1110, but they just get taller as you go up to two, the ten and the twelve, have it two fans on. So heat pump, the maximum size is 12 kilowatt hour, but you're running at lower temperatures, so it's not quite the same as a large intensive we're running 40, 40, 90 degree temperatures with heat pump. But you can cascade them, so if you get a bigger property, you want multiple heat pumps, you can put multiples of that team. If you do do an heat pump installation, you want to do course, you've got more, you want to sell heat pumps and specify them, we have a specific team that you put your information in, we have a full hydraulic, electric uh, design quotation for your work. So we do all that in house. Uh, the design of the not the internal, it's its radiant floor sizing, do that itself, we do all the design of the heat itself. Uh, so all that's done for you, not the manufacturers will do that. It's slightly different with us because we're a manufacturer, there's a few manufacturers uh, getting into renewables, but there's others from other heat pumps you'll hear of with uh, East Asian names who've come over, uh, or other companies, and they've come from a, an air conditioning background um, to do heat pumps, we've come from a Boil one round barrels. So we're a manufacturer, so we put support in there. Cool. So it's slightly different and we give you support when you do the points. That's an open, exploded view of it. Um, electronic box, the component parts from the heat pump. If you've not done heat pumps before, I've got a heat pump course. Um, when you got on the course, we explain what the compressor was, the evaporator, obviously the fan the inverter within the unit, but it's not as relevant to do the course, but we do offer a free course at um, Farnham, Bristol, wherever you want to do Some of the component parts we do as well with the heat pump. Again, um, as, you, as you move down the journey of doing heat pumps, these have become more appropriate. We have a hydraulic box, so you've got your component parts of the system, such as your expansion vessel, uh, three-way valve, that can all be contained within one unit rather than being all over. So if you've got a bit of a plant room, you can put that unit in there, contain it within. It's also got a backup heat tank mm -hmm. electrical. So if I'm in the unlikely event the heat failed, got a little immersion and a heating element that will warm the system six kilowatts. So it wouldn't leave people without any heat. So that's part of something that you can fit. These are extras that you don't have to fit. Obviously, you have to fit an expansion vessel, but you don't have to fit this hydraulic box, but we do everything so it can all be desk and it's nice. 
We also do something called a union tower, which is a cylinder with that hydraulic box that showed you all the component parts. So if you were fitting the heat pump, realistically all you need is the heat pump, that unit, which is the size of an American style fridge, but you know, it's tall and big. So you're gonna need some sort of plant room or utility room to put it in. But you've pretty much got everything there, plus your sensor comfort that uh, Simon mentioned earlier. It's the same controls. So on. Main difference being with a heat pump is you would you wouldn't have your leather, leather on offs and offs, on ons and offs. You do it on all the time. Might have been nice that, but the people just clean it on all the time. And that's one of the things that people struggle to change over to from going from gas, which this is my background really, um, going from gas to heat pumps is that you don't really tie them to go on and off, just leave them on. Which sort of throws down the control temperature. Uh, for plus heat, heat pump range. These are all the various component parts we do. I say I'm always doing this because I'm conscious of time. I've got a little video I want to show you. Um, cylinder different sizes, on to that. This is this unit tower with the hydraulic uh, attached to the top, so it's the same component parts with the 190 meter cylinder. Then the elements you can have within it. So now, that obviously, <coughs> leads you know it's an issue. Got to take the temperature, which it does. Temperature above 60 degrees to completely eliminate chance of Legionella. Can't be on though anyway. So it will take the temperature up. It has a Legionella cycle set within the sense of comfort. One thing that's worth mentioning is with heat pumps, you would put generally within a unit, you would put glycol, antifreeze. To fill the entire system with antifreeze could be quite expensive. So what we do is this heat exchanger option. So you only have to fill one side with black hole and you have a plate heat exchanger within. So you plate heat exchanger, you've got black hole one side, you've got water the other side and here. The other side, not the riveters, so I've got my side as well. One side, black hole the other side. It could save you quite a lot. It was a big installation. This unit itself is about 500 pounds. But if you keep refilling the system with black hole and filling it up with black hole, or it's for somebody who's got to Bleeding radiators and empty them were well worth it. So, a lot of larger properties they fit that. So, one size bike and one size water. We have bike capture units as well because the cost of it and supply. And then we have a range of cylinders to use. So, same as our other range of cylinders, but they're heat pump ready. With a heat pump cylinder, you'll have more coils inside, the heat transfer because we're from lower temperatures generally. That's one on the right there, isn't the hot water on off. That's a crane point that confuses a lot of people. It's actually for lifting it, but in, but you think it was the hot water to draw off, but it isn't. Um, the range runs from 120 litres to 800 litres. So we'll do some pretty big cylinders. We also do buffers with a a heat pump, you generally, generally, not always, you need a large open volume of water within the system, so you may need to fit a buffer, or probably have to fit a buffer within the system. So these are things you've got to accommodate. And I do appreciate it's a difficult to do if you're going from a common in a, in a heat pump fit and finding a place to put everything. It's not going to be a one solution for everybody. And this is a valent thing, we're not going to, you know, we're going to have to do hydrogen as well. Not everybody's going to be able to have a heat pump because where I'm from, so the Coronation Street world, it's all Terry Stouse's and uh, Virgil Ian, so how do you fit a heat pump there? It's difficult because you've got to accommodate all these component parts. So there are there are things to consider. Sorry. Now your range of cylinders you had there. Yeah. <coughs> when are you going to make a coffin one? Oh, horizontal? Yeah. Yeah, don't ask that. I mean, it, it, because you're saying you're accommodating for yeah. hydrogen. What about accommodating for domestic houses? That ain't yeah, you're right, you're right. I mean, they're going off. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and obviously you can't fit a normal cylinder because of coils. Exactly. The way it's but yeah, I mean, actually only last week we got asked for one. That's right across the board, whether it be heating yeah. or, or renewables. We don't have one anymore. We, we've cut back on cylinders, if anything, because we've dropped our, uh, we don't have a solar cylinder anymore. We did a, a dual coil solar one. Uh, no, I suppose it is the demand, really. Exactly. There, are, there are companies that do do them. Yeah. We'd like to buy ours where, where possible, but yeah. I guess if we did one and it's we only sell. She thinks eight to the houses in Portsmouth. Yeah, have space for uh, Yeah, no, absolutely. They have a bedroom. Absolutely. I mean, it, there, there is a demand for them. Yeah. 
But I think some of the club haven't can sell for dinner. I I, I, I'm not going to sell any other company, but there are other clubs yeah, that do them for the odd. Yeah, there's the odd in between, you know, there's the odd for the ball. Take point, now it's something. I'll quickly jump in here. I hope you're getting something from this heat pump presentation. If you are, then please give me some feedback by clicking on that thumbs up. You can click on that subscribe, click on the bell if you want to receive a notification, and of course, share the video. If you want to see more of my health videos, you can visit my website. And I'd like to say a really big thank you to everybody who's bought me a cup of coffee and left a donation in my toolbox fund. It's really appreciated and it does really help me to make more videos, which I hopefully help you. Uh, well, first of all, it's sense of comfort, and I'll go through the controls again, because as Simon said, the main thing is it's a sense of comfort control, same control use, um, it can be wired all wired, wireless, um, but the difference is, I can't stress it enough, the difference is with the heat just leave it on, you know, you know, I've experienced gas for 20 odd years, and, and we always have cheapest boiler is a boiler not turned on, you know, boiler that's off is the cheapest boiler that's on, you know, keep turning on and off, especially rolling boilers. With a heat pump, it's not one of them, just leave it on. So, control goes straight to that. That's, that's, I say, we've gone through that quickly. Like, if you anybody want a copy of that, I can let my by email if you want to actually just go through the readings and the nitty gritty on it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put um, a video on for you, recently done by Kevin McLeod, Paul mm -hmm. Holmes, Holmes, what is he? All right, Miss Holmes. Grand designs, grand designs, shouldn't know really, but uh, you'll know him when you see it. He's done this little video. I will point out he uses his existing cylinder, and I've just been saying about multiple coils, so we're presuming that his existing cylinder is a heat more ready one with lots of coils in, so there's no way of I'm walking along the very edge of the White Cliffs of Peacehaven in East Sussex. You can see it uh, And I'm looking for one house in particular. This place is. Uh, it's windy, it's exposed. It's not the place we expect necessarily to find a cutting edge piece of heat pump technology. That's exactly what I'm looking for. You know, I think generally speaking, there's a perception that heat pumps are somehow difficult to install and they're inefficient, they're not as good as traditional gas boilers, and, and they need a lot of care and maintenance. And yet, the project I'm going to see is a really simple, straightforward one. Cutting edge, nevertheless. It's a homeowner who's decided to fit a heat pump straight into an existing 1960s semi-detached house. Genius idea. Don't know if it works. I'm told it does. I think it's just over here. It's completely silent. <laughs> Hey, yeah, how are you? It's very good to meet you. Oh, thank you for inviting me. So, how long have you had your system in? The system's been in for about three or four months. And not long? No, it's been in during the winter months as well. We've changed the boiler three and a half years ago. Oh, so, it's right. not that old. That was a condensing gas boiler. Yeah, 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 more than one. Our okay. gas bills were rising very quickly. And so were our electric bills, too. So we have to do something about it. You install a client, you're a family. I mean, clearly you know this tech and you know, you know, what it's capable of. But here you were you were plumbing into an existing building. It's not a new building. So no, as a heat pump engineer myself, I want to be able to show my clients that we can retrofit this to any building. Yeah. And I'm getting fantastic results for it. Can, I, can we have a look at the system? Because I, I'm yes. I, I want to make sure that you're not pulling any trip. <laughs> Absolutely, no worries. All right. Well. It's a sleep swarm over anybody's eyes. So, that's the main thing. How are you? Are yeah, you a well, business partner? He's my business partner. Indeed. Indeed. I'm Irish. So, just tell me something. Are people turning more and more to heat pumps? We're seeing a huge uptake. Shit. This, this heat pump here is super efficient compared to a gas boiler. Yeah. And all this. <laughs> I come back to that, that all this with the same rats, more or less, that were there, mm. and the same tank. Yes. In, 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 can we have a look at it? Absolutely. Yeah, come as well. the governors. <laughs> so, looking down the wall, uh, this is just an expansion bursting. That's right. Uh, and this is a control panel. This is the heat pump interface. So what this does, it essentially talks to the heat pump 
and it provides a digital array of what is happening within, within the heat pump and the system. It's showing us how many kilowatts we've used today and what the system pressure is. From the customer's point of view, they'd be looking at their sense yeah. of comfort in the middle of the house. So you come out here and look at this, and you see your problem looks at that. That's right, yeah. yeah got it. You see, I want to know whether or not you are just as much a heat geek as your partner. <laughs> Uh, no. <laughs> I knew the answer because it's almost not possible to be more of a heat geek. I've had a lot of talk about heat pumps. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm getting to grips with it. Yeah. What, what would you say to other people thinking about maybe making the switch? I would say it's definitely a good move. Uh, how was it for you? Yeah, I mean, you had, it, you had it installed in the middle of winter. Uh, yeah, pretty much. I um, found it absolutely fine. It was consistent. Uh, temperature didn't feel cold. It was it's a good just just the same old. It was yeah. the same temperature. The water was the same temperature. It just it, it, you just almost didn't notice that you'd switch from gas to heat pump. Yeah. You know this project is really really compelling. It's compelling because this is a straight forward house. It's three bedrooms. It's semi detached. It's nineteen sixties. There are so many homes like this across the country which can benefit from the, the kind of system that Luke has designed for it. And that is why he's one of the three winners. I think this really points to the future. <laughs>
Google a lot more installs as a as a country, not just Vagrant, but we want to do Vagrant. Uh, the end of the spire. Who, well, who is MCS? Obviously, why not take who are Napit? You probably know who Napit is. Possibly. Uh, and the training journey. So I've got this shot, I've got a longer version of it. Anybody wants it to see me, I'll send it over and it's just through everything if you want to on this spire journey, but I just want to do the book one. Valent is a member of MCS and REP, that's Micro Generation Certification Scheme, and also the Electrical Energy Code conduct. Uh, now that's an electrical installation body, which you probably know. That's that's what it is. What does it include? Can you read that okay? I'm showing the red. I can't see your net, so I'm just done. An opportunity to upskill and become competent in the heat pump installer through a planned training journey. Support from Valent Training and Sales Off when we're through. Um, discount and registration. So it is discounted if you come on our Aspire journey to become MCS registered, you will save your money. And some of the courses you'll already have, some of them you've already done that are parts of it, such as unvented up water, possibly water regulations, energy efficiency, um, electrical safe isolation. You've probably done some of those, so you might be already part way towards the journey. Um, who is MCS? It's the governing body, Micro Generation Certification Scheme. You'll hear that name mentioned a lot. To access the grants that you can get, such as the Boiler Upgrade Scheme grant, which is £5,000 for you to get towards a heat pump installation. Uh, you have to be MCS registered, you have to provide an MCS certificate, otherwise, you can't get that grant. And that grant is good because if you're doing a full, I think we discussed it when we was on the box, somebody mentioned it on the boiler, when we were doing the boiler tour uh, and the heat pump tour at Belfast. A full hit installation, you know, with a heat pump and cylinder and everything. When you equate it to a boiler with a full radiators and everything, um, when you get your five grand back, there's no real difference. So, you know, because it is they are more expensive, but that compensates if you were doing a whole new system. That's what you need. It's a long thing, as I said, I can talk to anybody who's interested about it. Uh, I'll get them and I'll send them more information on it, but I have a question to put to it. Uh, you want to hear from high block, perhaps that's important. Who is that pit? Let's pull that body that we use. It's an office based assessment, and then there's also an on site assessment. Once you've done an installation, you find an installation, do it, come out and assess it. There's a journey all the way through, and they'll check it for you. Rex, the governing body for MCS, it's a cold heat sign or two. It's like almost like gas safe, they will they police it. Prerequisites, these were what I was mentioning before, some of these you'll already have. If you've got a lot of those, you're probably partly through. Desirable LPG, you don't need it. The, 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 you know, low temperature, you don't need it. But those on the left hand side, well, the most of them probably a lot you've got. You've got electrical safe, you've got safe isolation, that's a weird part. No? Uh, as I say, I can send you this in a longer form that explains everything because it's a pathway that we show that goes through it. Or your quotation for the elements that you've not got to get you there to get you to be MCS registered. One of the main things to do is to come on one of our courses that's free and start your ebook journey today. So, these are descriptions of course. So, that's it really from me in a nutshell. I will be here if there's any questions. You can ask me a question now if you've got them, but I'll be hanging about what I'm conscious that uh, Jason needs to do his finance bit and show you how to. So that's about it then for the air source heat pumps. If you want to watch Simon's video all about the brand new Ecotech Plus, you can click on the link just here. If you want to know about the finance, click just here. You can give me a thumbs up, share it with your friends, click on subscribe, ring on the bell to get a notification, and a cup of coffee is always really appreciated. Bye for now, and I'll catch you in the next video.